Thank you, Chris. Uh, and uh, good afternoon, good morning, good evening to everyone who's joining us today, wherever you may be. Uh, as Chris said, the uh, restart agenda is a perfect theme for today's session. And I have the great pleasure and honor of introducing our keynote speakers for today. Uh, I'd like to just start with a few remarks about you know, my, my thinking on this restart agenda since I have um, myself um, effectively restarted my career in the United States after about 25 years in Europe and uh, including the UK. Um, so uh, of course, we're going to be restarting in the United States with a new administration. Um, and there's much speculation about what that will mean for policy in the tech and telecom sector covering a range of issues, uh, everything from privacy to security, to infrastructure build out, to the regulation or not of digital platforms. Um, uh, and of course the digital divide, which the pandemic has, has of course accentuated. Um, in Europe as well, uh, we see change on the horizon, big change uh, as we approach the Brexit transition deadline and uh, the EU uh, and the UK will apparently go their separate ways, uh, finally. Um, and uh, of course, we'll also see the implementation of a new electronic communications code starting in just 11 days time, uh, which will mean some significant changes for many in the sector. Uh, and uh, of course, finally, finally, the restart uh, that we're all hoping for is that with uh, the vaccines for the COVID-19 um, nearly within our grasp and hopefully within our arms, uh, we will be able to restart life as we used to know it, but probably with some significant changes based on the virtual lived experience that we've all been going through this past grueling year. So with, with that, um, I'd, I'd like to um, uh, ask you to bear with us as uh, we uh, try out the IIC Spiffy new platform. Um, it is uh, quite the uh, precision time clock. So uh, if we make a few mistakes and get cut off uh, or uh, talk over, um, uh, please be, bear with us as we, as we get used to this very uh, interesting new system. Um, I would first like to introduce Ed Gillespie uh, who will be um, uh, uh, our first keynote speaker. And, and let me just explain a little bit about uh, the structure of how we will be proceeding. Uh, so Ed will start with pre-recorded remarks um, and then he will be followed by Chairman Pai uh, and who will actually be speaking live. And then we will go directly into a live Q&A session where you can ask questions of our two keynote speakers. And when that uh, session is over, that will last about half an hour. We will then go to uh, Narita O'Loughlin, who is the chair of the Australian uh, Communications and Media Authority for her remarks on digital platforms, which will lead nicely into the following session. So with, with that, I would like to introduce uh, Ed Gillespie, who is the senior vice president um, the executive senior executive vice president for um, external and legislative affairs at AT&T. Um, Ed is fairly new to this very important role at AT&T, and so we are delighted to welcome him uh, to our um, to our family here at the IIC. So, uh, without further ado, I will hand over to Ed. Hello, my name is Ed Gillespie and I am the Senior Executive Vice President for External and Legislative Affairs at at and It's a pleasure to join you for this very important conversation and I thank the IIC for the opportunity to participate in this year's conference. The uncertainty and hardships caused by the COVID-19 pandemic reinforce that access to reliable high-speed internet is critical no matter where you live. The pandemic has also demonstrated how communications technologies can support social and economic continuity and make our societies more resilient at times of uncertainty and disruption. To weather the changes of tomorrow, the private sector and governments must work together to promote laws, regulations, and policies that will help usher in a new wave of digital transformation. AT&T is committed to building this future. We will continue to innovate and create opportunities 
to improve the lives of our customers around the world. The digital economy is more important than ever. Now, digital devices are not only a key driver of growth, but increasingly necessary to avoid economic hardship. During the height of public health restrictions in March, AT&T's core network traffic in the U.S., which includes our business, home broadband, and wireless usage, increased by 20% over the previous month of February. The AT&T global network is also carrying more data than ever before. Nearly 392 petabytes of data traffic on an average day. That's up nearly 20% compared to pre-pandemic figures. It turns out that investing more than $135 billion over the past five years to build a robust network with self-healing architectures and open standards can help ready it for just about anything. Even prior to COVID-19, digital services were growing rapidly around the world. Our industry is transitioning as data and video consumption have skyrocketed. In fact, since the first smartphone launched in 2007, Data traffic on AT&T's mobile network alone has grown more than 580,000%. Beyond the strength of our network, AT&T reacted quickly to ensure that our customers and the communities we serve across the U.S. had digital tools and resources to weather the pandemic. When that pandemic left 50 million U.S. students displaced from their classrooms, for example, we acted to help ease the transition to remote learning by creating the AT&T Distance Learning and Family Connections Fund to support parents, students, and teachers with new tools and resources for distance learning. At the end of November, we built on that by committing $10 million more to support our nation's most vulnerable students who don't have adequate internet access and are disconnected from learning. Together with Connected Nation, a leading nonprofit helping communities solve their broadband and digital technology challenges, will work to close the homework gap for struggling students by providing free Wi-Fi hotspots and free AT&T internet service. We also recognize the critical role first responders and medical personnel are playing in helping care for our communities during the COVID-19 pandemic. That's why AT&T has committed $5.5 million to provide nourishing meals for first responders medical personnel, and others affected by COVID-19. This includes a $1.5 million contribution to World Central Kitchen, which provides food to heal and strengthen communities in these times of crisis. We've also redoubled our commitment to our existing local initiatives like AT&T Believes, which connects our employees with local collaborators and company resources to create positive change in our communities. Today, AT&T employees are finding ways to safely engage in the local efforts to support a range of COVID-19 recovery efforts. Recently, this initiative has gone international, with AT&T Believes launching in Slovakia, the Czech Republic, the UK, Ireland, and India. Those are just some of the ways that we took cooperative action to ensure not only connectivity for our customers, but to show support for the people and the communities we're so proud to serve. However, COVID-19 related challenges remain across the globe and in the U.S. Among the post most important of them is that access to internet varies between countries, rural and urban areas, and with, even within cities. If these digital gaps are not closed, inequality will increase. In the U.S., broadband investment has benefited from productive and forward-looking government policies. Indeed, a light touch regulatory approach is what has allowed AT&T to invest more than $135 billion between 2015 and 2019 in our wireless and wireline networks, including capital investments and wireless spectrum acquisitions and operations. We can work together to improve outcomes for all, harmonize regulatory approaches and policy frameworks within countries, trade agreements, and multi-stakeholder bodies can promote broadband access around the globe. Cooperation is as necessary for addressing the challenges of today as it is for building a more innovative future. And it will be essential as we prioritize 5G deployment. For new technologies to reach the market, mobile networks will need to deliver complex network management capabilities to enhance quality, performance, bandwidth, latency, and coverage. 
All of this is possible with 5G, and we'll need all the cutting edge features of 5G to meet growing demand for video, streaming, and other high bandwidth services. By 2022, we estimate video consumption might make up more than three quarters of AT&T's mobile traffic. Greater adoption of ultra high definition 4K video, autonomous vehicles, drones, mobile gaming, and virtual and augmented reality will also drive future traffic. The potential economic impact of 5G is compelling. Deploying the next generation of high-speed 5G wireless networks could create up to 3 million jobs and add approximately $500 billion to the U.S. GDP alone through direct and indirect benefits. Of course, there are a few specific 5G use cases that we are particularly excited about. The first is in the healthcare sector. 5G can drive greater adoption in telemedicine and remote care, which has already seen a surge in utilization during the pandemic. One in four older Americans had a virtual medical visit in the first three months of the pandemic, and most of them were over video. Hospitals will have greater speed and connectivity to handle the explosion of data created by the Internet of Things and other patient monitoring devices, enabling better, faster, and more responsive patient care. Finally, education has a lot to gain from 5G adoption right now. Flexible learning options are critical for parents and children adapting to life in the pandemic. 5G can help students learn outside the classroom by delivering the high quality data speed and responsiveness to a phone or laptop. Regardless of distance or location, 5G can empower traditionally unserved or underserved students by streamlining their access to the same information and exercises as their peers have. Investing in 5G today will be essential to expanding access to new educational opportunities and preparing our children for the jobs of the future. We can work together to ensure that no one is left behind in the digital economy. And we should all take comfort in the enhancements to security that are built into the 5G architecture. The adoption of software-defined networks, virtualization, and increased security features will help provide for a more secure and resilient communications and digital ecosystem. Beyond 5G, the growth of over-the-top services, Internet of Things technologies, and other emerging solutions demonstrate how trends in software and hardware development both are converging with heightened consumer demand for information. At least 138 countries have an OTT video market, and global OTT video revenues are expected to climb to $129 billion by 2023. Studies have projected that by 2025, data consumption in Europe will boom and that average data consumption will have doubled between 2018 and 2023. Meanwhile, consumer IoT will reportedly account for 56% of connections while industrial IoT in Europe is projected to triple during this same period. The ubiquity of mobile technologies and convergence across new and traditional industries is reshaping supply chains, research and development, consumer behavior, and everything in between. 5G is accelerating these global trends. Today, our industry enables and provides digital project products and services in ways that were unthinkable a decade ago. From robust 4G and 5G to apps and to the cloud, the mobile revolution has launched entirely new industries and businesses. The traditional value chain assumes that only the last companies in the chain, distributors, have a direct-to-consumer relationship. Now all companies in the value chain are competing for recognition and to create direct relationships with consumers. And both companies and consumers have benefited from these direct-to-consumer market dynamics, which are resulting in more content, better experiences, lower prices, and easier to access services. There is a vast opportunity at stake, and countries must be careful not to stifle innovation in emerging markets that stand to benefit most. To create a vibrant market for digital products and services, we need transparent, fair, and market-driven rules for global commerce. Just as businesses have to transform, so too do global regulatory approaches. Policymakers should cooperate to develop and promote standards and best practices 
that empower consumers and foster cross-border investment. Governments can encourage digital transformation with the following three policies, for example. One, removing barriers and maintaining an openness to trade, enforcing trade agreements, and promoting transparency in rules and regulations. Second, facilitating cross-border innovation by discouraging the forced localization of data and lifting restrictions to spur investment. And lastly, by supporting data portability principles and, where necessary, promoting interoperability. Our work is cut out for us, so we must start planning and acting now. While it's impossible to predict what the world will look like after the pandemic has subsided, one thing is certain it will be more digital. More people will be working from home while consumers and businesses will be relying more heavily on e-commerce tools that have demonstrated their vitality, convenience, and reliability during the most difficult of circumstances. That's why it's imperative to promote policies that stimulate investment through a level playing field and facilitate the free flow of communications, people, and ideas. Thank you for allowing me to share our insights and expectations on the pace and potential of digital transformation with you here today. From all of us at AT&T, we hope you say, stay safe and healthy.